Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hi, we're back again, and in, in this lecture um, is going to be devoted to uh, providing a brief introduction to this AFM simulation software package that uh, Arvind Rahman and his students have developed at Purdue. Uh, the package is about five years old. It's been tested uh, by tens of thousands of simulations uh, over the years, uh, so it's pretty robust and uh, it, it's, it's been uh, refined quite a bit. And I think it's important for you to have some understanding of how the software works uh, because we're gonna use it uh, in some of the homework and exam uh, uh, situations uh, throughout the remainder of this course. So <clears throat> by way of a brief introduction, uh, this is web access accessible software. It's open source. And all the computations are done here at Purdue. Uh, the, no computations are done on your computer. It does require you to have Java installed. And uh, the uh, applications of VEDA range from the very simple for beginners uh, to uh, much more advanced users uh, uh, when you get into the dynamic AFM. Um, all the, uh, the virtue of VEDA is that all the dynamics of the cantilever motion have been uh, solved accurately. So you don't have to worry about any of those details. And it's extremely useful in building uh, uh, and answering what I call confidence building exercises. Right? These, are, these are questions that sh sharpen your intuition and allow you to do better and, and more accurate, more meaningful experiments in a quicker period of time. So I think it's worth learning uh, the software and I think it's worth using it uh, uh, as you progress uh, through the course. Basically, uh, the software is laid out in such a way that you have to provide a variety of input parameters. Uh, a lot of those input parameters we've already discussed in the first two weeks of this course. Uh, a lot of the other input parameters that are required will be discussed in weeks three and four of the course. But with these input parameters that basically specify your operating environment, the uh, properties of your cantilever, information about the substrate that you're studying, uh, how, how your AFM is, work, is working, what type of controller are you using, the uh, feedback settings, etc. You have to choose the contact mechanics that characterize the tip interacting with the substrate. And you also have to specify the nature of the interaction force, right? With those input parameters, then VEDA allows you to do a variety of calculations related to force spectroscopy, uh, related to tuning curves, and also uh, you can do scanning simulations to see how an AFM would respond in principle uh, to a, a given set of circumstances. So this provides the uh, sort of the big overview for VEDA that uh, hopefully you'll keep in mind as you, uh, as you progress through the rest of this course. Uh, to log into VEDA, there's a number of ways to do it. Uh, in my opinion, what you need to do is you need to print out the uh, slides from this lecture and have them uh, readily available to you when you first try to use VEDA because we're going to provide step-by-step -step instructions that we think will be of use. Uh, to make best use of these instructions, I think you need a paper copy right next to you uh, as, as you work through the, the simulation software. But uh, <clears throat> the next couple slides just show you the uh, hoops that you have to jump through if you, uh, if you want to use VEDA. Uh, because you're registered for this course, you're already a member of this thing called nanohub.org, which is the, the uh, supporting uh, software uh, for this NanoHub U uh, course initiative here at Purdue. So you've already uh, been registered. You have a login number. Uh, you can go to the nanohub.org website and log in. Uh, once you log in to NanoHub, you can then uh, click on the Resources tab, and under Resources tab, click on Tools. Uh, once you click on Tools, a new window uh, will open up. This new window will then allow you to uh, uh, view the variety of tools available at NanoHub. 
and you can scroll down and you can pick out VEDA and you can then launch VEDA uh, uh, from, from this uh, format. Alternatively, if, if you uh, go to the course webpage, there's a direct link uh, to VEDA, and just by clicki clicking on that link, you should uh, uh, immediately land on the, on the VEDA webpage. Um, uh, after you launch VEDA, you should see a screen that looks something like the one that, that's shown here. And basically what you have to do is you have to select the desired application tool that you, uh, you would like to uh, 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 investigate. And for the purposes of this lecture, we're just going to select the uh, tip sample force viewer tool. This is perhaps uh, the simplest tool that, that's available and it allows you to uh, uh, numerically investigate the uh, tip sample interaction forces that we've uh, spent the previous two weeks discussing. Uh, there's a useful pop-up window uh, that allows you to, to extract some of the windows from the web page. So uh, take advantage of that if it makes, uh, makes uh, uh, navigating through VEDA simpler. Once you select the tip viewer force application, um, uh, there will be a number of tabs that are displayed across the top of the uh, uh, computer screen. These tabs basically guide you through the the various steps that are required for you to complete a, a particular calculation. So you can click on these uh, tabs to jump between the various stages of the calculation. Uh, alternatively, if you sequentially go through the tabs, VEDA will uh, lead you through everything in a, in a, in a systematic way. So uh, the first tab that, that has to be uh, clicked on is the, the tab referred to as operating conditions. And in the operating conditions, you have to specify a variety of parameters uh, that allow you to, spe to uh, tell the uh, software where you want the tip to begin, where you want the tip to end, how many numbers of uh, data points do you want to use in, in calculating the uh, motion of the tip as it moves from its initial gap to its final gap separation. So these numbers have to be entered in by you. Um, you'll notice that uh, there's already uh, uh, default numbers entered under each application. So if you don't know what to do, uh, uh, you can basically rely on the default numbers until you get a sense of, 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 of what values might be required for you to perform a calculation that's specifically of interest to you. Um, uh, you, can, you can change these input parameter values very, very quickly. Uh, it's not a problem. Uh, <clears throat> if you... Um, after you've entered in the uh, appropriate input parameters, uh, you have to click at the bottom of the uh, uh, right-hand bottom of the, the web page in order to advance to the next tab. So the next tab is in, the, in this particular application, the next tab is to specify the tip sample interaction properties. So if you click on that uh, uh, tab, uh, you're given a, a wide variety of models that you can use to specify the tip sample interaction model. So for right now, let's just click on the, on the Hertz contact. That's the simplest one. When you select the Hertz contact, you'll see uh, on the screen before you the, uh, the a schematic uh, diagram of how that, uh, 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 how the interaction force varies with position. So as you recall, there's no uh, no long-range uh, uh, tip surface interactions in the Hertz model, so the interaction force is zero all the way up until contact. Uh, once you uh, achieve contact, then the interaction force starts to increase, as shown by the red, red curve here. And uh, how that increase occurs is going to depend on um, uh, the input parameters. And so uh, there's a, a variety of uh, slots at the bottom of this web page that allow you to input things like the tip radius, the Young's modulus of the tip, uh, the Young's modulus of the substrate, the Hamacher constant, or the, the uh, for the Hertz model, there's no Hamacher constant. It would just be the Young's modulus of the substrate that's required. So 
You have to scroll down to uh, view this entire list of parameters. So unless you have a widescreen uh, monitor, uh, you always have to uh, uh, physically scroll down in order to fill out all the parameters that are required. Again, there are default parameters suggested, and you can use those for your first time application. Um, you can always return to the previous tab if necessary. That's always displayed on the bottom left side of the uh, uh, web page. Uh, if you want to advance to the next tab, that's always uh, displayed on the right hand side of the web page at the bottom. So you can click back and forth uh, uh, between these uh, quantities. Uh, if you want to actually run the simulation, you have uh, two choices in this, uh, in this particular case. You can, you can click on the tab at the top, which is uh, uh, listed three here, or you could uh, click on the tab at the bottom right, which is simulate. That'll get you to the actual simulation. If you click on that simulation, what you'll see is you'll see the, uh, the Hertz contact model plotted out. Uh, for the particular parameters that you've chosen. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see a numerical plot very similar to the one that I've shown here. I think all the parameters that I've uh, selected are the default parameters uh, suggested to you by VEDA. And then in addition, um, you can look at a variety of different other plots um, that are also given by this pull-down menu. So uh, there are other selectable outputs that are uh, very relevant to a particular calculation that you might uh, 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 perform, and you can select those other outputs just by highlighting the particular uh, item and, and clicking on it, and you'll immediately see a, a plot of that particular quantity. Um, there's, there's also a, 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 an option that allows you to echo the input parameters. This gives you a list of all the input values uh, that VEDA uses. Not all of those input values may be relevant to the particular calculation that you're performing, but nonetheless they're listed. And you can print this, uh, this uh, echo input parameters table out and use it for future reference so that you can remember in some detail um, uh, what, you're, uh, what you're trying to uh, accomplish in this particular session. Um, you can always uh, click back to uh, uh, um, go back to the previous tab. So if you want to change input values and then compare the results of a calculation with new input values to the results uh, achieved in the first simulation, uh, that's uh, easy to do, very easy to do, and that's what VEDA is actually set up for. Um, it, just to run through a simple example. Let's say we'd like to compare the, the Hertz interaction model uh, for a tip and a substrate. Let's say we like to compare that to the DMT model. So we can do that by going back to uh, the tip sample interaction properties tab. We can, uh, we can select the DMT uh, contact model to, uh, to replace the Hertz model for the tip sample interaction. When you do that, you'll see a, a representative plot of the DMT model, and this reminds you of the important parameters that you must specify. And again, um, you have to fill in the blanks at the bottom of this uh, web page in order to uh, specify the exact parameters that are of interest in the DMT contact model. So for the DMT contact model, now you're gonna have to specify a Hamacher constant that describes the interaction uh, potential energy between the tip and the substrate. So that's a parameter that you, that you must uh, specify. If you want to simulate uh, the interaction force using these new values, in this case I use the default value suggested by VEDA, you have to push the simulate uh, button on the bottom right hand uh, 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 portion of this web page. And when you do that, um, after a brief period of time, your computer should then display a result that uh, compares directly the Hertz interaction model to the uh, DMT interaction model. Now you have a variety of choices here. You can display all plots at once. Uh, you can do that by clicking the, uh, the parameter all. You can start to select individual uh, simulations by uh, taking advantage of the selection bar which is located in the bottom of this 
of this particular slide. So there are tick marks on this selection bar. These tick marks are positioned roughly to represent the uh, different simulations that you might do in a particular session. Um, you can uh, display, you can emphasize one plot over another by, by referring to this legend display button. This is this little tool that's indicated on the right, uh, right panel of this slide. And uh, by uh, selecting different models or different simulations, you can make one simulation uh, a darker uh, a shade, a, a thicker line to emphasize it. You can also uh, 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 select different colors of, of lines by, by uh, clicking around in the Legends toolbar. Uh, uh, you can always return the uh, uh, plot to its original appearance. There's a little button in the Legends toolbar that allows you to go back to the original plot. So if you make a variety of changes and you don't like them, it's very easy to go back to where you started. And then um, uh, uh, it's often useful to, to export the uh, calculations uh, to other software. And that's available using uh, comma uh, delimited file. Um, and you can also achieve very high quality plots uh, uh, by clicking this, this, this button with the green arrow that indicates uh, uh, these simulations are possible. You can rescale uh, and replot the data. Uh, all you have to do is double click uh, on either axis. If you double click on either axis, a window will appear. And once that window appears, you can then specify the minimum and maximum uh, values. You can specify format uh, so you can tailor the graph uh, to your particular need. You can investigate individual values, uh, numerical values, by putting the cursor over a particular point on the graph. When you do this, a little window appears. And inside that window, the actual XY values of that particular data point can be displayed. So you can read off from these, uh, these uh, uh, windows uh, particular values of the, of the plot that may be of interest to you. You can also zoom in uh, to a particular region of the plot. Um, you do that by left clicking the mouse once and then you, uh, a little uh, dotted window will appear. Uh, you can then uh, shape the size of this zoom box over the region of interest and uh, left clicking the mouse again will allow you to expand the plot so you can you can investigate uh, uh, details over any region of the plot that's of interest to you. So uh, this is a very brief overview of how to use uh, VEDA. It tries to uh, emphasize all the important features that are available to you. Um, and by way of summary, if you, if you want a big picture of how VEDA works, I try to provide that picture in this particular slide. It basically uh, requires you to launch VEDA. It then requires you to uh, select a particular application tool. Once this tool has been selected, you have to select your uh, simulation parameters. You perform a simulation, and you can then view the output uh, on the computer screen. Uh, there are a variety of uh, tools uh, available that will allow you to analyze that output. And based on your inspection of the uh, calculation, you can change the input parameters, perform another simulation, and uh, see how that uh, new set of parameters causes the uh, uh, application that you've selected to change. Uh, once you're satisfied with uh, all the calculations that you've performed, uh, you have the option to save that output either as a high quality graph or as a common delimited file uh, for your own uh, uh, use in other, other applications. So this provides a very quick overview of VEDA. We'll come back to it uh, many more times uh, during part one of this course. Uh, uh, we ask you to all try it uh, uh, after this lecture is over. Uh, it's important for you to become familiar with how the uh, software operates uh, if you're going to be able to use it in a, in, a, in a simple and ready fashion. So up next in the third lecture of week three, uh, we're going to move into a discussion of hardware and experimental aspects of AFM. We're going to talk about some of the important features that are related to uh, AFM design. 
So thanks for your attention and we'll see you at the next lecture.